And a lot of times we like to see the building, uh, we like to see buildings because buildings seem to uh, speak to us uh, of how the church should look. And uh, as we as we look at building church buildings around the country and around the world, church buildings have taken on different shapes over the years. And from one to the next, you can go, you can go back to original temples. And we were privileged a few years ago, about six years ago, seven years ago, I think, uh, to go to Istanbul, Turkey, and see one of the oldest churches in the world called the Hagia Sophia and uh, we were in that tremendous edifice um, and there was just so much there it is now it is occupied uh, by uh, Muslims but it is still got the original inscriptions and all of those pictures you can find it on my Facebook page on my um, Ron Collette Facebook page if you'd like to see those pictures and and those that that it was just amazing right marvelous what you could feel the marble and the and just the the intricacies of all of that how many of you've been in cathedrals and you've been in all kinds of different edifices and 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 and, and it's at a certain level we call those churches and um and then you can go to other parts of the world and you can you might not find any marble you might find uh, grass thatch roofs um, dirt floors um, it's interesting because you can go the door has been reopened to me for the Philippines and uh, uh, I remember when I first went to the Philippines years ago and um, we were preaching in an island called Cebu and uh, we were, it was my friend Mark Coughlin and I, and we were in the Navy. And uh, he was my chief, uh, he was my chief discipler. And he was, uh, he had discipled me way back in the Navy. And um, we, we entered into this city in Cebu. And uh, we had no clue where we were going. We just knew we were supposed to find the church. Somebody say the church. Now, we had understood that the church was more than a building, and so we were looking for a body, right? We were looking for believers. We were looking for uh, the called out ones. And, uh, and so by Holy Spirit's guidance, we, we had fasted all day, and we had, we had traveled, and we walked and walked and walked, and God led us straight to the only Christian church at that time on the island of Cebu. And uh, in in Cebu City, we found this group of people who were the body of Christ. And it was an amazing testimony of God's grace and his direction as a as as a young as I was a young prophet. Then Uh, we were talking about some of the things just this week. He came actually from Texas and uh, actually purchased pastor's car um, and um, purchased it to give to a young man he's discipling and, and 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 he's still discipling he's still discipling doing exactly what god called him to do from the very beginning drove the car back all the way back to texas where we actually bought the car and so now it's back where it was and it's interesting because the kid's going to be right next to where my other kids live so they're going to actually see mom's car going back and forth it's really crazy how god works it out out but 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 I but but I thought about how faithful God is, and when we were we were just believing God, and and He told us some stuff this week I forgot about when I first got filled with the Spirit and how all that happened, and someday I'll share all of that with you. But I began to prophesy right out of the right out of the first day, and uh, and I just knew that we would find the body of Christ in Cebu, and we did. And when we found it, it was a it was a thatched hut kind of place, and uh, uh, and it didn't look like a church, but it was the church inside. Somebody say the church inside. And so I brought this picture today to to try to build something as we're going to talk about uh, the building blocks of the church. Somebody say this is his Lego set. 
Hallelujah. Michael, would you help me right here? Thank you, brother. Um, as, we, as, we, as we have talked about, as we have talked about this, this being uh, church. Somebody say church. Last week we, we came together and said, um, uh, many people woke up last Sunday and said, which church are we going to? And uh, seemingly that made sense. Which church are we going to? And, uh, but the fact is, is that even though there are a lot of buildings around Raleigh or wherever you live, um, there really is not a which church scenario. Because church is not where you go. Church is who you are. Somebody say who, who I am. And so as we looked at these scriptures again, I, I want to go back and, and, and bring us up to speed. And then we're going to take on the next level. Somebody say the next level. So I'm going to hurry up through these right quick. Praise God. So somebody say, Jesus said, I will build my church. So Mark's gospel chapter 16 verse 18 is our key scripture. Amen. And, and I say unto thee also, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevent it. King James read prevail, literally means prevent. Somebody say prevent it. And so, so we are, we are, as we move forward in the scripture today, we're, we're taking this as his statement of the foundation of the church. And when he talks about, when he begins to, begins to give, uh, you go, go ahead and put that one up. When he begins to give Peter, when he gives, gives him this, this word, and he, he's not only giving it to Peter, but he said, I am giving I'm just giving you some keys. Say it with me. Say some keys. Recently, uh, we, we, we were able to trade cars. One of the things that I've got to do with her car is that the keys that came with this car, uh, they start the car, but they don't unlock the car. I said they start the car, but they don't unlock the car. You have to stick it in, and, and the, 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 the wireless thing is. So i got to go get that fixed this week. And not a big deal. But it said something to me. It said, like, if, if, if I give you the whole kingdom, am I going to give you keys that halfway work? And that was what the, the enemy was trying to plant this seed like, like, yeah, you got something, but it ain't all of that in a bag of chips, right? The fact is, is that when I get the keys of the kingdom, it gives me access. Somebody say, gives me access. And what I love about the Holy Spirit is that he is a proximity God too. You can get even close to who he is and where he is and doors start opening. How many of you have been to Target or Walmart lately and you just get close? They have a proximity sensor and when you just get close enough, the door opens. You can back up and you, you, you come back and they just open like they sense you're there. They sense you're coming. Uh, the keys, and, and somebody said, well, somebody had to unlock that door. Yeah, they unlocked the door, but the sensor was turned on after the door is unlocked. I'm telling you, every door that God has given to us as the church is unlocked and the sensors are there. The thing is, is that you've got to get close enough. The problem is, is we just can't get you close enough because you've had bad experiences with Church 101. And so, so you've, you've put yourself in a bad place because you won't get close enough to the church because you think the church is a bunch of hypocrites. Somebody said one time, I'm not going over there, that church is, I'm, I'm not going to church, it's just a bunch of hypocrites over there. And, and Ken Copeland said one time, says, well, you better get saved and not go to hell because hell's going to be cram loaded full of hypocrites and you'll be miserable. Amen. Somebody say, I will build my church. And so when he said, I will build my church, he said, I will build my church. I just want you to know that this is his church. Amen. And so we understand that he has given all things up for his church. So we also saw that Papa created a saying kingdom. And so when, when, we talk about, when we talk about God, we talk about a God who speaks, who speaks, and therefore. 
And so in the very beginning, we saw that God said, let there be light. Somebody say, let there be light. And so God created a speaking kingdom. He created a kingdom that says something. Look at your name and say, you have to say something. When you go to a witness stand, when you have to, you have to say something. You can't just testify by smiling. You, you can't testify by just being present. You have to say something. And by your words, you will be condemned or justified. And so he gives us a picture of a kingdom when he created the world. Because he said it and it was. Somebody say he said it. And it was. And so he was building a relationship with a, a yet known to be species called mankind. He was already building a relationship, but he built the kingdom inside of you before you were even you. I got you. I got to help you here today because you have to understand you already have this kingdom expression on the inside of you. You just forgot about it. Because he spoke you. Somebody say he spoke you. See, when we dedicated Star, we dedicated Layla, we dedicated these babies. We, we, we dedicated these babies who were, who were created, right, in the physical after the image of their dad and mom. Because they, somebody say, you look just like your, your daddy, you look just like your mama. But their spirit was created long before the natural came together. There's a piece of history that's way down on the deep on the inside of you that has been locked up until you come in proximity to God. And when you get in proximity to God, the door of revelation begins to open. And when the door of revelation begins to open, you felt like I knew this, but I didn't know it. I, I, I walked this, but I haven't walked this. I, I've said this, but I haven't said this. I, I feel this, but I haven't felt this. And so, so something on the inside of you identifies with this unknown peace to mankind. But yet you, you are known by God. You're known as, come on somebody, I want to be known as I'm known by God. And if he knew me before I was formed in secret, then there must have been another whole world that he talked to me about before I got into this one. And when I got into this one, I forgot everything he'd ever said to me because that was in the spirit. But once I get close enough to the calling out. See, the church is so much more than a building, y'all, and a dance floor. When I get close to his church, then I can begin to hear him talk to Peter and say, you're, you're, a, you're a piece of the rock, but upon this mass rock, I'll, I'll use you to help build my church because you got a piece of me. 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 And when you get in proximity to me, you get more than a piece of me. You start understanding the mass of me. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I got a piece of the rock, but when I get close to the rock, I get a piece of the mass. And I want more of the mass today because I have some mass confusion at trying to come against me during the week. And so I need to get more of a piece of him today. You want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? Yeah, I do. I want more of a piece of you. Well, I decided a long time ago I'm going to quit going to church. Some of y'all need to quit going to church. Amen. What are y'all doing? We're going to, which one are we going to? We're just in that, that whole thing. That's not a piece of him. That's a piece of history. That's a piece of something that man put together. I'm not going to no church. I am what I'm going to. What I'm going to do is not forsake the assembling of myself together. But we call that assembling the church. No, no, that's not the church. That's not ecclesia. Somebody say, he called me out again. There he did. He called me out again. I am so glad to even have a piece of the rock. And I'm not talking about prudential. I'm glad I got a piece of him, but I'm getting more peace about the peace. Now I recognize I got more peace because I got a piece. And when I got a piece, my peace was increased. And now my, I'm getting more of a piece. I'm getting a bigger piece. How many of you, if it's your birthday, you want the big piece? Yeah. 
Don't tell me no little old bitty piece. A little bitty slice. Don't give me no little slice. Somebody say, I want a bigger piece. Come on, somebody. When you're trying to negotiate a d deal, when you negotiate a deal and you know you want 20%, will you settle for 10? You, I, I know what I got invested. Right. I, I, got, I want 20%. Somebody say, I want a bigger piece. Come on. And God's not, a, he's not ashamed of you asking him. He's saying, okay, ask and you shall receive. You, need, you want some more of me? Then if you want more of me, then watch this. There's other pieces of me that you're going to, you're going to get. Because uh, you're going to get a piece of the cross too. You're going to get a piece of me. At one point he told his disciples, pick up your cross and follow me. That's a piece of him. And sometimes we don't want to do that. By the way, he said to do that daily. It's not a one-time event. Aren't you glad it's not a one-time event? That's why I said, I love that song. Jesus, we love you. We adore you. We adore you right now. He adores me. He, he loves me right now. I love him right now. I didn't just love him yesterday, but now I love him again today. And I'm loving him more today than I loved him yesterday because that's the kind of God he is. He's just more faithful. You can't beat God's faithfulness. But you can show him your part. I, 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 I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You do? Show me. I have faith. Show me. I love your church. I just don't like those people. Well, that's, an, that's a, that, that cancels itself out. I love the church. I just hadn't found the right one yet. Somebody say from chaos to order. So he spoke in a, in a chaotic situation. He spoke into chaos. God's creative process that he put as the basis, the foundation of Ecclesia, the church, is a spoken process. Not an attending process, a spoken process. So I don't attend, therefore I believe. And I don't speak, therefore I believe. I believe, therefore I speak. So I believed, then I spoke I'm going to get a word, a rhema word at the gathering today because I am called out to be a blessing. Somebody say I'm called out to be a blessing. So I'm going to get a, a living word today. Not from a man, but from hopefully a man that submitted to life and the living word. And God will filter his, his, uh, his disconnected speech whatever he'll filter his rambling on and walking back and forth he'll filter all that and it will become a rhema and it all is because i decided i thought i decided to go to church i'm coming next sunday bishop i hope not what i said stop told somebody one time this and folk had asked me over the years they said why do you preach that folk don't get you I said well um, I try to make it as plain as I can does anybody get misinterpret what I said when I said stop coming to church did I mean stop getting up and coming over here on Sundays no stop in your mind mentally assenting to the fact that if I do this that equals church So in the beginning, God created church. No. In the beginning, God said something. If I say, I said it. And Jesus looked at that. He said, you said in your heart, if I will, if I could just. Come on. He said to that little woman that had for years. Come on, somebody. Twelve years was, was beaten down. Was this and that. Was this and that. She said, I, I said in my heart. If I could just get through the crowd, the yeah. 
crowd, the, the mess, if I could just touch the hem. So she was actually trying to get to church. <laughs> That's right. Good Lord. And we think traffic is our problem. And we think makeup or hair or uh, that's not your problem. You didn't have a problem there. You're still the church when you're stuck at a red light. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's the red light challenge. Anyway, that's one of my favorite shows. I love Cash Cab. <laughs> Somebody say it's, it's a challenge. Anybody ever got stuck? And you think you can't make it to church. I can't make it to church. I say, no, don't worry about it. You don't, it's not that at all. You're still the church when you're stuck. Look at your neighbor and say, you're still the church when you're stuck. <laughs> Lap somebody. And the earth was without form. God loves to speak into something that doesn't know what it is yet. So if you're confused about church, great. You're at a great place because God is getting ready to speak to you and tell you what and who you really are. I don't know. Somebody just said, I don't know. I need to know what my calling is. You know, people ask all these questions. Bishop, I just need to know what I'm called to do. What am I, what am I called to do? Well, first of all, you were called to be. Before you're called to do, you're called to be. You know, Shakespeare and James Stewart, I don't know if you know, everybody know who James Stewart is? King James. James Stewart and Shakespeare, they were contemporaries. Did y'all know that? That's why when you read the King's English language, you, you hear like a Shakespearean theme. Because James Stewart was like, he was like in, in league with, with, with Shakespeare. And they were, then the language, the poetic language, etc. And that's so, so wonderful. But he, he, had to, he, had to, he, he wasn't hung up. He wasn't hung up on, 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 on who he was. He knew who he was. And I won't even go there because this would mess some of y'all up with y'all King James self. If you really knew who James Stewart was. Right. If you knew some of his tendencies and leanings. Anyway, we'll keep going. God can use anyone. He has some real tendencies. Well, he, had, he had friends. You say, no, not the King James Bible. Oh, my God. No, no, y'all don't get it. That's, that's redemption already sewn into it. That's the scarlet thread of redemption. That's Rahab the harlot, baby. That's everything, that's everything that God planned. Sometimes you don't like the way the church looks, but it planned, God planned it just the way he wanted it. He wanted the church to be attractive to harlots and prostitutes and homosexuals. And he used them to even... Put, put the pen to paper and get somebody delivered. Come on, somebody. They're the ones that are pushing the cars. Not the pretty people blowing their horns. God's looking for some cigarette toting. Oh, y'all don't like me. And yeah, yeah, he's looking for some of those good old boys who'll tell you just like how they feel. I love them. 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 Come on, tell me how you feel. I think you're, somebody did last week. Somebody last week. I, y'all, I just saw it. They were like, while I was preaching, hope you're watching right now. I love you. You said all he there is for the money. I love you. You're at least being honest. Yeah, yeah, they say the, the quoting on there. And some people read that. Oh my God, should we pull that off? No. That's who we're after. Somebody said he's only in it for the money. I don't know why they said it. Did I say something about money? But, but, but it, it says something to me that we're reaching the people that want to push the car out of the way. Push the religion out of the way. Push the old, I got to go to church. With those preachers who taking all the money. Believe me. 
We're having to live through that, Teresa. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. You grew up in it. You grew up in the church. How many of you grew up in the church? And you have to, you're now living, having to live past the negative, the negative, all of the language and all of the perceptions. And by the way, most of those perceptions aren't true. Did you know that most divorces happen because of perceived injury? They perceived he's going out on me. They don't have the facts yet. They perceived it. So she said, I'll just go out on him. And then she does. And and perception, the perception turns into a disconnection. And you, you live your life thinking those preachers, all the preachers. It's like whenever somebody says stuff like this. Have you ever say this? All men are the same. And men, all women are the same. All cars are the same. That's not true. There's a few things that are the same. Like stinky breath. I mean, that's the same. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. It's just still a stink, right? But there's some, most stuff is not the same. It's not the same. You cannot interject your, your, your negative uh, um, um, uh, history on what really is. And so your foundation, that's why we're doing this. That's why we're t- I'm taking my time through this. I may be on this the rest of the year. I'm all right with it. Are you? Yeah, yeah, because we've got to restore the foundation. The Bible says if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? How are we going to do this? I'm not, I'm not trying, I, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't, you can go somewhere if you want to, where they got the nice coffee shops and, the, and donuts and all of that stuff. We tried it. We had a little donut shop down at the last place and, and folk came because they could eat those cakes. They were good, though. We had to stop getting that food because we, we couldn't get through the door. Praise God. Church was good. Yeah, them cakes were good, too, bro. And the cake was without form. And void. And darkness was on upon the face of the deep. Let me tell you something. This is how God starts. See, God always starts with things that need form, things that need substantial help, things that need light, things that need to come up from the deep. Come on, somebody. God starts this way and he moves. The problem is that the earth that we're in, the church that really God has founded, doesn't want him to come up and move on it. Because when he moves on something that's not his foundation, he destroys what man has made. Jesus went into the temple. Come on, somebody. And he saw what was going on. He went out there and he turned over all of those money kicked and beat them and and all of that stuff and and he said to them he said my father's house shall be somebody say shall be in other words he was prophesying what it is going to become that it shall be a house of prayer a house of what prayer what is prayer again we could take off on that for a year right communication with come on the founder who ooh, ooh, communication with the founder it would be wonderful if i could if when i have an issue with my apple i could talk to Steve Jobs, right? I'll just call in Steve. Steve, this thing won't work. I'm pressing it twice. (laughs) Now, in the natural, you would think if Steve was still alive, he would think that was, how did he get to me? I'm too far advanced for him. And I don't answer these silly little piddly questions like, come on, Wi-Fi and hooking up and why didn't I get this done? But The beauty about your Papa God is that he created you and he cares for you and he's God. And so he can take your call. 
Mm. He can take your call. Customer service, not on hold. Come on, somebody. He can say, yeah, you click that once, but then you come over here and you say this three times because, by the way, you need to say something because that's how I created you. I created you to say something. you got to quit looking at that car and saying, I just, why don't you say something over that car? Why don't you lay hands on that car? Why don't you prophesy over that engine? Oh, that just sounds like, that just, oh, what does that sound like? No, that sounds like the church. That sounds like what the church is supposed to be doing. Oh, so what we've done is we've institutionalized that and we bring the car to church so the pastor can pray for it. I'm bringing my family. I'm dumping my family off so Bishop can pray for them. I'm bringing them so y'all can do this. I'm bringing everybody to a building and God says that's not the church. He didn't call us to bring everything here. He called us to bring, come on, revelation here and grab some stuff here and go back and be the church in the highways and the hedges and compel them what? To come to him. We should have some compelling moments in our week. Compelling moments. You just need to come to church on Sunday. You just need to meet Bishop Collette. And please don't do that because you're setting me up to disappoint them. When you do that, I will go off and say a bad word. And then they won't ever come back again because they came because of me. Y'all don't understand. You're the reason why preachers fall a lot of times. Now, I'm not saying all the time. It's because people push them up so high. And people are coming because they think they can get, come on somebody, another touch from another, come on somebody. I'm not that. That's why John the Baptist says, this is he. This is him. 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 This is why I was called the prophet. Uh, uh, the prophet who came out of 400 years of silence, Anthony. 400 years God had said nothing. And God said, I've got to reinvent my ecclesia. Because they are they have they, are, they were the church. We'll get, in, we'll get into the book of Acts where it says they're the church, they were the church in the wilderness. He says, I got to get them out of the wilderness. In order to get something out of the wilderness, something has to die. And the Lord of the church was ready to become the head of the church. But somebody had to say it. And he called a prophet who was the weirdest dude you'd ever meet. He come out of it. He was like hairy and yelling, eating honey and locusts, was tripping on sugar. And then he would flatten out and come back up. And he was just all over the map. You couldn't follow his message, but he was a voice. Yes, he was. See, we don't, we, 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 we don't understand voices of prophets. We're just looking at the character only. We're just looking at God. They have everything in order. They may not. They may get mad and slap somebody. And then they're repenting. They're over by a bush going, God, I'm sorry I took that. I shouldn't have been ugly to that woman on the noodle. But I was just tired. And God counts it all in stride because he says, no, it's not that you were right doing that, but I was right letting you do it because if I didn't let you be normal, they would be worshiping you. And all I'm doing is preserving your life because if you are all of that in a bag of chips, I have to open the chip bag and eat them. And you don't want me to eat you. So I'm going to let you be a little bit of Jacob today and Israel tomorrow. Because the church is founded not by prophets. We're just built upon 
the foundation up. But they were not the chief cornerstone. You can't have a building without a cornerstone. Thank God for prophets, apostles. But you pull that cornerstone out. He's holding it all together. He's not holding it together based on personalities. And how many Facebook friends you have. He's holding it together by the, watch this, not the power of his word, but the word of his power. Because you got to say something to get something. Yes, I want that car. Somebody say, make up your mind. Somebody, you know, come on, how many of you, you've know, been shopping till you're, okay, that's enough. Research, Bishop, buy the car. And I did, and I bought it, and still had to fix something on it. But I'm all right with that. Why? Because it's sharpening my character. Everything about it is calling me back to being humble before his presence. And I'm not all of that because I learned my lesson really good on car stuff. About the time I paid my black BMW off, I, I spouted off one Sunday. And I said, Bang, thank God I got a paid for car. And I was, the next week, I was down in Sanford with my friend Richard Twist. And a paid for, had the title in my hand. I, I got my title. I paid my payments. I own this car. Come up on a wheel and a wheel in the middle of the, somebody say a wheel within the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I come up on a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Because I was in the middle of my wheel and that wheel was in the middle of my wheel. And that wheel came into my wheel and tore the hole underneath the body. And all of a sudden the next thing I know after $7,800 worth of work underneath it. Which is all plastic pretty much. BMW plastic is $1,000 a piece. Anyway after $7,800 uh -huh, a guy was just taking the insurance company. He was just just eating them up. And pretty soon they called him and said you have gone past the salvage value of this car. Now we're going to have to salvage it. It is a total loss claim. Thank you very much. He got his money and I got a total loss title. Somebody say, hush. Don't be telling everybody how blessed you are. Let them see how blessed you are. You don't need to tell me. Somebody say, didn't I tell you everything would be all right. Am I in the house? Yeah. And so, so the earth was without form. God said, this is it. This is it. I got I to show you this. I got to show you how to start with nothing. And so somebody, somebody, somebody needs this today. Some preacher needs this. I don't know. But there are preachers out there right now they're, they're thinking of, because we are in a nation that's blessed, we think we can just do anything we want to do. And because and, and we're, we're, we can just start a church. And that whole start a church thing has just gotten under my last nerve. I've said it for years, and I, I can't tell you how offended I am when someone says, I think we're going to start a church. I want to smack them right there. I want to just hit them square. I really, I really would rather just take them out because they're putting themselves in. You don't even know what you're saying. No. I remember you I've watched Tombstone when he was walking through the river. No. No. Somebody say no. No. You don't know what you're saying. How can you start? You can go there right now. Don't do it. Startchurch.com. Get all your paperwork. Get everything done. Startchurch.com. It's just like a little dance. And then they've got, they got folders for you. How to deal with, how to do, <laughs> how to set up with the mayor. Come on, go down. <laughs> dancing, come on. Dancing with your partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the form you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put all these forms together. Mm -hmm. Have people come. Mm -hmm. People are just going to show up. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. They're just going to be nice. Yeah, you're not going to have to deal with anything. 
people are wonderful. Oh yeah. <laughs> and while people, pe- bishops and pastors who live in reality are going, y'all are cray cray. You don't know what you're asking. First of all, you're trying to create something, start something that you cannot start. He said, I will build Well, I just feel like we're supposed to go start a church. Well, first of all, you're, you're unscriptural even the very first thing you said. I just feel. Because when you put church and feelings in the same sentence, you're, uh, you're already in trouble. Because I, I, I didn't like the church, first church. I, I just didn't feel good in there. Ooh, it just feels... And God said, let there be light. The foundation of the church, Ecclesia, has to be God shining on it. It has to be a revelation that you know God is shining on this. This is God's light. This is not something we thought up in a Bible study. At a home group. Just think the Lord is saying to us, we just need to start right here. Who's going to dance? Somebody say from chaos to order. I, I, I still am not getting to my Legos. Can I get to my Legos, Lord? Somebody say from chaos to order. I, 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 I would really... I would really like to see exactly what God ordered. Okay? I'm tired of getting what I ordered. What if you went to the, went to the restaurant and you picked the pages? And How many of you remember? I, I've got them. I've, I've got these big old, I've preached this before, but it's a whole different message. It's, it's entitled... Uh, <laughs> Close your menu and stay out of the kitchen. And the fact is, is that we order based on what we see. How many of you have been to the restaurants that show pictures of the food? Somebody say danger. Danger. Now we quit shaking your head. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Somebody say that's dangerous. You never show your hand anyway, right? Why would you show a picture of some food, the perfect food, when you know you don't have a perfect chef back there? (laughs) He's a relief chef. The main chef's on vacation. And you done took pictures of what it's supposed to look like. How How many of you ever had something you ordered by a picture? And when it gets there, it has two French fries and a semblance of a piece of hamburger. And you're looking at the menu and you're looking at what you ordered and you're saying, this is not. (laughs) We have a picture in our mind. And we order based on what we think it's supposed to look like. So therefore, we're constantly disappointed. Because we're, 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 trying to, we're trying to get some earthly chef to cook us a heavenly meal. Man, I'm saying a whole lot today. I, and, and, and God said, I will build my church. And so here's our, here's our statement today. Then Lord, somebody say, then Lord, show us your church. We don't want to build anything outside of your blueprint. We want your foundation. We want to know that we know that we know that we're, we're, we're at least, we may not have a lot going on, but at least we got a good foundation. I go back to our friends that help out there with, with CHAP on that building. May not have got it all done while he was here, but I guarantee you guys got a good foundation out there. You can build anything on that. Somebody say, at least. At least. Get the foundation. And then the scripture says, when you've got God's foundation, 
anybody can come along now now you've got God's foundation come on you Apollos Paul but God gives the increase at least get the foundation right and there's some, there comes a point in our life that we might even have to go back and relook at the foundation of who we are as moms and dads, as families, and go back and, and repent to our families. I did it. Yeah. I got on my knees before my family. And I said, listen, I tried to build ministry before I built my family. Cried in front of them. And they all gathered around their dad and said, Dad, it's okay. I said, yeah, I know it's okay, but I had to tell you this. At some point, my foundation got skewed. And somebody told me I had to do this to be a great minister. I had to do this. And, and I tried to balance. Listen, in God's economy, you don't ha- it's not a balancing act. He gives you the church, the ecclesia, should build strong families. The ecclesia should build strong relationships. The ecclesia should build wonderful, uh, open people. People who are vulnerable. Who who say, that's all right. you hurt me, but it's okay. I forgive you. I forgive you. Not arguments. Not not where James says, where do all of these fights and wars come from among you? He wasn't talking to everybody. He was talking to the church. Where where are they coming from? They're, They're inside of you. We got to re examine. So if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? But today, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We speak faith back into the foundation. We speak order back into the chaos. And we thank you, Father, for giving us revelation of what has already been done on Calvary. What's already been done at the resurrection. And we thank you, Father, today. We submit to you. Build your church. And God, we are, we are pieces of that building. And God, we're fit together, like the scripture says. We're fit firmly together. And God, we're as strong as every joint supplies. So today, Lord, let the joints begin to hook up in this house. And across the world, and people that are watching and saying, I've been looking for, and don't, I know you might want to say, I've been looking for a church like this, like, don't even say mine, but you're just looking for his church. That's all. His church got a lot of different kind of buildings, from grass roofs to beautiful cathedral ceilings. It's not about that, but it is great that you have it. Thank him when you come into your building today. Thank him when you have a parking lot. Thank him when you have, a, you have people that are, that are manning posts. Thank him. But when you have just a group of people that are saying, God, we want to be used. Thank him for everything. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I'm blessed by this group of people called the stone today. And we just bless those, Lord, that are, that are uh, uh, just maybe out there that have, that have said we're just looking. We're just looking. Oh, God, we bless all of them. We bless all of them. We don't make fun of them who are trying to seek you and trying to find you. We just open our hearts and say, why can't we be one? And Father God, in Jesus' name, open up avenues this week for all of these Legos. We'll get to it. For all these pieces of saying pieces. Because the word say means Lego. That's where we get our word Lego. I'll I'll get to it. I'll get to it. But I'm telling you, these are saying pieces. I will say. He said within his heart, I will say, I want to say it out loud, not just in my heart. I'm going to say it out loud. Thank you, Father God. You have built me according to your plan and your structure. I have no ought in my heart. Watch this against you, Papa. And I thank you for every building block that you let me talk about. So I speak into existence, Lord. Your church reformed, even in this city. And God, we just bless you in Jesus' name for it. And we thank you for all the blocks in the room and all the building blocks. Say amen. Give the Lord praise today for his courage to continue. I I need to tell you that. Courage to continue. 
no matter what you feel like today what is hurting you courage to continue courage in your family come up here pastor let's agree with them as we close I just want to have a family prayer today courage I speak courage into you and we speak family family courage courage for your sons and your daughters and courage for all of your spouses and those that are estranged from you courage to love them even when they left you courage to believe for God to intervene and for God to reestablish his kingdom right here right here even in this house and through this house and if you're watching me if you're looking at this on video today I encourage you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life make him number one number one take everything out of play center in on him center in on his love center in on his purpose and say without you I could do nothing without you I would surely fail without you I'd be a ship without a sail I thank you today Father for blessing our lives with your presence and these children that were dedicated Lord we just send them off blessed today and we thank you, Lord, for traveling mercies for everyone that are traveling this week, including myself. And, Lord, for Pastor Nick and Marie, God, all of those, Father, we just bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord praise today. We love you. Amen. If you need prayer for anything, come on up. And we'll love on you and pray for you. See you Wednesday night. Amen. For another installment on Upgrade in Love. Can't wait. Praise God.